you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, Dream Team? Coach D here coming at you from beautiful, sunny San Diego. And I'm here with our beautiful co-host, Jamie Martinez. What's up, guys? And we got some more questions from the listeners of the Living the Dream podcast. But before we get to these questions, we're going to go over some of our current events that's going on in our lives and some wins and struggles. This week, we were able to make it out to the Del Mar Fairgrounds. We made it just on the last weekend, so that was pretty cool. Uh, We had a nice little game plan as we arrived. We were going to make sure that we hit the rides first on an empty stomach and then grab some food and some beverages, and then we were going to go after some games. So first thing right off the bat, we walked in the gate. Pretty crowded, but not too bad. We went straight to it seemed like it was the scariest ride in the entire place. What do you think? Um, I think so, 100%. It was so scary. I was terrified the entire time, just talking to myself in my head. It was the tallest ride, and it's basically not a sphere, but like a swing, right? Yeah, like a giant swing with a cage of seats on either side. Yeah, so while one side is down on the ground, while the four people are entering their little seats, the other four people are straight up in the air on the opposite end, just hanging, just chilling, and that's that was the scariest part. I looked at you and I was like, please don't do anything. Like, don't talk. I'm just eyes closed talking to myself. Yeah, we had to be like 300 feet up in the air just sitting there for a few minutes. That was probably the scariest part. Then when the ride got going, it was fun. It was you were swinging all the way down and then all the way up and you were going backwards and forwards. And that was pretty cool. Uh, And then the rest of the rides we did were a bunch of like spinny, shaky, crazy ones as well. So that was great. We glad we did that on an empty stomach. And then we went to the food portion of the fair, and oh my goodness, it is overwhelming. That fair food, are you kidding me? There's fried this and crazy sugar battered this, that. It, it, was a, it was a lot. Um, we all had one or two things that we really wanted to try. And for me, my thing was I was going straight up carnivore. I wanted to get the turkey leg that looked like you were just some sort of badass Viking, and it was wrapped in bacon, so that was pretty cool. Uh, and you got, what did you get? So I really wanted a corn dog in the stand that we walked up to, ordered my corn dog, and he was like, well, the only ones we have are wrapped in bacon. So I was like, all right, well, I'm here, so let's freaking do it. Um, But to be honest, I was not a huge fan. I could only take a couple bites, and just the texture was not what I wanted. I wanted it to be crispier. So you tried to help me out. I think you finished it. Yeah, I wasn't let it. I wasn't gonna let it go to waste. Now, uh, that food is expensive. Are you kidding me? That turkey Shit. leg was thirty bucks. But I mean, it's it's all part of the experience. But I felt like the food was a little underwhelming. You know, the the best thing that we got were those little donut bites that we shared as a as a group. And uh, yeah, I mean, I probably could have gone without eating too much of the food. But it was it was part of the plan, part of the experience. I feel like, uh, yeah, the food wasn't the best quality. But it was something that it didn't take us away from our goals. It was I actually probably ate less calories than I probably should have that day as I'm trying to get my, my calories up. But I wasn't able to eat a whole lot, especially when since I went with the, the protein amount. Um, but yeah, how did your experience go with with your thoughts in your head when it came to your fitness goals, your health goals and then consuming food that didn't really take you towards those goals? Yeah. So after my corn dog fiasco i went and i got a large pretzel that was jalapeno and cheddar and i think i ate about half of it it was definitely better than the corn dog but like you just said not super amazing um while i was eating that pretzel the whole time i was in my head i was like this is literally just carbs this is not helping me at all but again i wasn't mad at myself for it it's one day one afternoon so i mean it's just like it's part of it we we knew i went to the fair for a reason try some fun foods we were getting our steps in all good yeah. And then after that, we played some games, which was awesome. That's like my favorite thing to do, even though it's like $10 a game. Uh, we were able to, you and I, we won a stuffed animal, Mr. Pickle. Yeah, we did. Uh, we had to throw these balls at these balloons. And apparently they used to be darts, but they're not allowed to have darts anymore. Any sharp objects. I wonder what happened there. But we threw these balls and we hit six for six, which was great. We won a a stuffed animal, and then we went, went and tried what you guys were super confident that I was going to be able to do, which was the basketball game, and I myself was pretty darn confident. Uh, I missed every shot. 
unfortunately. So I guess that's, I'm going to blame that it was a carnival game and not my skills, but now I'm also going to get back on the courts and, and really put my practice in. So we had a good time with the games. It was an overall great experience with the fair. Shout out to Dalton and Lisa who were there with us. Yeah, and then the next day we went to dinner with our friends. So we had a couple of members that were at our old studio who won a big time uh, eight week challenge. And Ken, he's lost 80 pounds in his journey. He's he's just an amazing guy, super nice, super friendly. Just a, a, a I love being around him. And he actually, because he won the the challenge, he took us out to dinner in a really nice restaurant down in Mission Hills area. What was that restaurant called? Yeah, it's called Fort Oak. I had never heard of it before, um, but apparently they actually just got voted as one of the best restaurants in San Diego um, from the San Diego Magazine, but it was delicious um, from start to finish. Beautiful. What did we get? We started with some prawns, some lobster. Yeah, and then we went for the main courses. You and I got the same Wagyu New York strip, and Ken and Janet, they got that, what was it called, a fish? The Branzino. Branzino, yeah, and it was it was just it was very fancy, very delicious, great presentation, really beautiful venue. Definitely check it out if you're in San Diego and you want to go on the the higher uh, end of your you know experience when it comes to going out. So that was a really fun fun thing to do. And then what else are we doing? You're you're starting a summer sunshine and hydration challenge with all your clients. Yeah, so. Starting July 10th, you all are welcome to join as well. If you're interested, DM us on the Live in the Dream podcast um, Instagram. But yes, yeah, so July 10th starts it. It's a three-week challenge, so we got this. And each week, we're going to be adding in some different little fun um, ways to add in sunlight to your day and different um, recommendations for water. So we'll just kind of tweak the, would you say, guidelines every single week. And then we'll be giving away a little special prize. So we're also going to be doing that with our members in the studio as well. I mean, why not? We all need sunshine. We all need to be hydrated. So I'm just pumped. I need some more sunlight in my life. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. So what's the action item? What's our first thing that we need to do? I'm going to be doing it too. Okay, so the first week, 7.10 through 7.16, the goal is to get 10 minutes of morning sunlight, so first thing in the morning, um, and get in your inner bath at at least 12 ounces of water right when you wake up. That's just week one. Week two will be something a little different along the same lines. Same with week three. Oh, heck yeah. Sweet. I'm excited for that. Uh, we all know the benefits of getting outside early in the morning. Get some sunlight in your eyes so that you can set the, your circadian clock to have a nice night of sleep. And then getting your inner bath, we've had that as like one of our top things that our clients have really attached themselves to and really enjoyed and something that they've taken through into their everyday routine. And they've kept it as part of their habits, which is great. And that just gets a jump start on your water intake. It also helps to kickstart the metabolism. And it really feels like an inside bath, just washing away all the stuff that accumulated over the night. Uh, we have an episode that talks about all the benefits of that. If you're interested, we'll put that in the show notes. And cool. Let's move on to the struggles and the challenges of the week. I'll go first. My win for this week is I've been putting together a year-long program for our group fitness studio. I'm so excited for this. It's been so fun going back to something that I'm really passionate about. And I get to share all of this with our members very soon. Uh, it's a big, big thing that it's um, gonna take a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of creativity. So I'm really, really excited about that. And uh, I've actually been making some pretty good progress on that. My struggle is because we've been doing all these things with our friends and I've been taking on these bigger projects, I've really been off of my own training program. So Really, I'm just trying to take a bunch of group fitness workouts, being able to show my face there. And it, when I do that, it really takes my own training that I'm supposed to be doing, that I've programmed for myself, and it takes it really off course, which it is what it is. Sometimes you're gonna have to do that and adjust. Uh, my aura ring, though, it was talking sweet words to me this morning. It said, hey there, champ. Your resting heart rate for the past week indicates that you've recovered very well. Looks like you've done a good job balancing your workouts and your rest. And as you guys probably know, that's one thing that I struggle with the most. So, you know, maybe maybe this little adjustment is helping me out here. Uh, we'll keep you up to date with that on how I feel and all my recovery. But yeah, stay tuned for some amazing programming updates. I am super pumped on it. What are your wins and struggles of last week? Okay, so it's going to sound silly, but I feel like 
our win and struggle or my win and my struggle um, is the same thing. So, right, we get home pretty late from work almost every single night. We both work Monday through Thursday. We close at a studio. So dinner is usually around, what, 8.39, um, if I'm being completely honest, which is not the best, but it's our schedule. Our bodies are used to it at this point. Um, so while we eat our dinner, sitting on the ground, working on our mobility. Um, we also like to watch something lighthearted, something funny um, before we dive into our yin yoga and like education side. And for the longest time, we have just been obsessed with New Girl. If you have not seen the show New Girl yet, go watch it. It is hilarious. I think we've watched that entire series I want to say at least five times by now. Um, but that was always our nice little short, lighthearted show at the end of the day. Um, we finally dove into Ted Lasso. We've heard so many people talk about it. Episode one, we were hooked. Um, so that's been our new show that we watch at night. Um, so that's nice. It's nice to have a new show, something lighthearted, something hilarious. And honestly, it causes a lot of emotions every single episode. Um, but I would say that's also our struggle because we love it so much. There are some nights where we end up rolling into a second episode and just taking more of our time when we need to be focusing on other things. Um, so a little double edged sword there, but highly recommend both new girl Ted Lasso. So we just have to be better, stick to our boundaries. One show, then move on. Yeah, it has really affected our nighttime routine because the yen yoga that we like to do that helps us to really downregulate our nervous systems to get ready for sleep, that takes a back seat when we go into that second episode. And then it's like it's a compounding thing because if we watch another episode of Ted Lasso. We end up probably eating a little bit more snacks. We end up staying a little bit later. We don't get that light that goes down. We are stimulated from the TV show and we don't let our muscles downregulate and relax, which is one thing that helps you to get better sleep. So it kind of is a compounding thing that isn't great for us, but we just have to be aware of it and then get right back on track and kind of make those boundaries and adjust. So yeah, I'm looking forward to adjusting there. Um, cool. Let's move on. Let's move on to the questions of the week. We got three questions, a lifestyle and behavior question, a movement and exercise question, and a nutrition question. What's ex uh, What's question number one? Question number one. What are some tips for staying motivated and committed to my health and fitness goals? Ah, I really like this question. Okay, so I'll start by answering it how a personal trainer would answer his client when asked this question. And that is, you would want to start by setting your goals. And you want to set your goals based on specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound goals. The smart goals that we all know. Once you set your goals, you want to make sure that you set some short, your mid and your long term goals so that you can then break those goals up into smaller pieces and start to chip away at them throughout your your uh, day to day routine. You also want to make sure that you find your why. So when you do set these goals, don't look at just the surface level goal. I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to lift this much weight. Ask yourself the question why maybe four or five times. So why do you want to lose 10 pounds? Well, I want to be able to look good in a bikini. Well, why do you want to be able to look good in a bikini? Oh, well, because I want to be able to have more self-confidence. Well, why do you want to have some more self-confidence and keep going down that road until you really dig into the deeper why? And once you find that deeper why, it's going to serve as a constant reminder for you to keep you focused on that journey, especially as you hit those roadblocks when you lose motivation, when life shows up, having that deeper why is gonna be that anchor that really helps to support keeping you on track. You're gonna fall off, you're gonna have obstacles, you're gonna have setbacks, but being able to look past those and jump right back in and not compound too many days of, of going away from your goal together, you'll be on track because you have these goals, you have them broken down, and you have this deeper why driving you. You also want to be able to create a supportive environment. It sucks, but the people around you, they will have an influence on how you act and what you do and just what you get exposed to. So if you are on a fitness journey, it's best to surround yourself with groups of people that do fit things. If your goal is to save money, it's best to surround yourself with people who do it the best. So create a supportive environment and surround yourself with like-minded individuals who support your health and fitness goals. And then share, share your goals with your family, your friends, get an accountability partner and create this sort of community, this tribe that's going to help you get towards your goals. You also want to be able to plan and prepare. You're not going to just go after this thing day after day, chipping away and 
with no plan. If you do that, you will it will take you much longer than if you just sit down, dedicate a block of time for you to just develop a plan that includes your workout schedules, what are you going to do for your meals? Are you going to meal prep? Are you going to have someone do that for you? Are you going to have healthy whole food options around? Are you going to take your snacks away? You want to make sure that you have these healthy habits planned out. Having a well thought out plan is going to reduce the decision fatigue that it takes when you are encountering decisions throughout your day. All of these things like, oh, should I, what should I cook today? Uh, should I go to the gym now or should I go to the gym later? Like all these things create decision fatigue. It's such a good idea for you to time block the things that you want to do. Take a list of things that you need to do and throw them in a time block and just schedule out your day the next day so that you have this overview of what you're going to be doing. That way you're not wasting time and that that style of procrastination that really just kicks in when you are between a couple of decisions, procrastination usually ends up winning and that's just going to be a little bit defeating for you in the long run. You're also going to want to track. Track what needs to be tracked. Track your progress. Track your steps. Track your protein. Track your sedentary time. Monitoring your progress is a great way to stay motivated. Keep a journal and use a fitness tracker app to track your workouts, your nutrition, or any other relevant data that's going to help you to get towards your goal. If you can see your progress and your improvements over a period of time, this will boost your confidence and help keep you motivated. And along those lines, celebrating your milestones, celebrating the small stuff. If you celebrate your achievements along the way, like when you reach these significant milestones or accomplish a smaller goal towards that larger goal, take some time to acknowledge the hard work that you've put in and maybe even do a treat for yourself. It doesn't have to be a treat when it comes to like a food related treat. It could be something like a self care day. If you were able to stack a bunch of things together and, and get a streak, maybe you give yourself a massage that month. Maybe you give yourself a day out to go walk around and hike with your friends, something where it can celebrate in a positive way that helps to go towards your goals. But just giving yourself that acknowledgement is so, so important. You also kind of want to embrace variety and find enjoyment in what you're doing. If you want to stay committed and find motivation, you're going to have to enjoy what you do. Now, every day you may not enjoy it. Like for me, I love fitness. I love working out. I love going to the gym and lifting. But am I motivated to do that every single day? No. What I do is I make it a part of my schedule. When I am motivated, I enjoy it a ton. And then the days that I do lose motivation, it's part of my habit already. So I just do it anyway. I do the hard thing and I just get it done. Uh, another thing that you can do, another tip is practice self-compassion. So just remember, set setbacks, obstacles, they're a part of the journey. And they actually probably teach you more than your wins. Being able to calibrate this worked really well and this didn't work well at all. Being able to calibrate what that looks like when it comes to your goal, that can be super important in the future. So take your losses, take your setbacks, your obstacles, and just know that they're part of the process. If you miss a workout or have an off day, just be kind to yourself and try not to string two days in a row together. Avoid this self-judgment that we always get in, this self-talk that's negative, and just focus on learning from the experience. So those are some of the things that I would tell a personal training client if they were looking to stay committed and motivated. For me, what I like to do personally is I'm very competitive with myself and I love gamification towards my goal. So we did a whole episode on gamification of your fitness, but for me, I like to gamify what I do. So I'll track how many days a week that I do certain types of training. I'll track streaks. So I'll have a streak on my meditation. I'll have streaks on my steps. I'll have streaks on anything that I'm focusing on, and I'm super competitive on trying to beat that streak. A lot of the apps that you can download now have badges, which are great because they help to motivate and guide you to progress just a little bit more challenging, a little bit more energy, a little bit more effort each time you do something. And those badges are super fun to be able to earn those and collect those and go in towards a certain level. That kind of thing is something that I love to do. I don't know if any other people listening to this like video games or anything like that, but I try to create this video game for life. Uh, someone that I heard on a podcast the other day, they said that they can either wake up in the morning and burn calories 
or they can wake up in the morning and burn a hundred dollar bill. So this was their way of saying, okay, I have a choice on what I want to do, but I'm going to choose to do one of these two things. Do I want to sacrifice the money that I work hard for? Or do I just want to get up, even though I don't feel like it, and do my calorie burning workout, training session, exercise, whatever it is? I thought that was a super good idea. So maybe you can give yourself uh, an option here where something that you really don't want to do and then your exercise. And you might be able to give yourself props for being able to choose that exercise the times that you don't want to do it based on that kind of burn or burn mentality. Also, I just finished a book by Hal Hirschfield called Your Future Self. This book was amazing. I highly recommend it. I do this already, but it was so cool to see this written down and giving a bunch of different options on how to do it. It talks a lot about how to make your future self your best friend. So when you're going throughout the day and you're doing your day-to-day -day things, having that future self in the back of your head while you're making all these decisions can help you so much. And here's an example. So let's say you cook breakfast in the morning and you have a bunch of dishes that you need to do. Well, you could leave those dishes in the sink and have them soaking there and putting it off. And then every time you walk by the sink, you just, you know that they have to get done. And in the back of your head, it's just, it's taking up a little bit more energy, just knowing that it needs to be done. And oh, I'll get it done in the, in a little bit, but it's, not taking care of your future self because you don't know what's going to be happening in the future. And now you have you got home from work, you're tired, uh, you have a bunch of other projects you need to do, and now you are exhausted and you have to do these dishes still. So thinking about your future self when you do these tasks can be so helpful. And that decision fatigue that we talked about, just getting it done. We have a little song in our household that's called the Do It Now song. And mostly it's just me enforcing us to do it now because uh, the other people in our household love to kind of procrastinate a little bit on those things. Don't you agree? The other people, <laughs> me. <laughs> so making your future self your best friend could be a great strategy here. And the last two things that I would talk about on this question is stacking whatever you're trying to do with something that you really enjoy. So there was a study done where they had a bunch of college students that this was back in the days where they had iPods, but they gave these students these iPods and said that you can put an audiobook or your favorite playlist or something that you really look forward to on this iPod, but you can only use it when you exercise. And then they gave another group the iPod and they just had a set playlist on this, on this iPod and said, you listen to this while you exercise. And it was incredible how I think it was like 70% more engagement when the people that had this iPod, iPod audiobook or playlist that they really looked forward to that they could only listen to while they were working out, how it motivated them to to get to the gym and do their training as opposed to the people that could just do whatever they wanted with the iPod. So maybe you have a TV show that you really want to watch. Maybe you put that on your steady state cardio machine and that's the only time you can watch that TV show. Or maybe you go for a treadmill walk and I don't know if you can read and walk on the treadmill at the same time, but something like that where it's something that you really look forward to. Maybe it's a mindless TV show that you would rather not watch it on the couch at home after work when you sit in the same position that you sit in all day, maybe you save that for your steady state cardio and that will motivate you to go get your training session in. So that could be another good strategy there. And then lastly, becoming the health focused person in your circle. When you take on the responsibility of being the health focused person, you are talking about exercising. You are inviting friends to do the active fun outside stuff. You're talking about how you are changing your healthy diet, all those things to your inner circle, you can become the health focused person and they will then start to adapt some of the behaviors once they see how amazing and beneficial it has been for you. And when you become the health focused person, now this puts you in a position where you feel like you're creating change. You feel like you have power to influence the people around you positively. And that right there is an upward spiral of commitment, motivation, it keeps you going. When you know that other people are counting on you and you know that other people are watching you, this is just an amazing way to keep yourself consistent, amazing way to keep yourself going towards your goals. And who knows, two years from now, you could be a completely different person in the best of ways when it comes to changing your lifestyle to a healthier, happier, more fit and long lifespan. So there's some great tips right there for you. Let's move on to the next question 
for exercise and movement. Question number two, what are the benefits of strength training? Yes, and this one was from our dear friend, Shalika. She is amazing. I'm going to give Shalika a shout out. She comes in to the studio every day, super, super positive energy. She's been working her tail off. She just lost, she's already a very small person, but she lost a ton of body fat percentage and gained muscle at the same time. She's visiting her family over in Sri Lanka right now. And her family said, she said her parents aren't in the best of health, but she's going to go over there with exercise resistance bands. We get, we gave her a whole full body workout. Shout out to Shalika. She, is definitely new to the fitness realm. So this was a great question for her. What are the benefits of strength training? Well, strength training is so important when it comes to your longevity and your health span. Do you need to strength train in order to live a long life? Not necessarily. You could live a long life, but in the end of your lifetime, the last decade of your lifetime, you end up seeing these elderly people who are frail, who have poor posture, who are dependent on others to take care of them, might even need people to change their clothes, go to the bathroom with them, that kind of thing. When you strength train, you gain muscle mass. You earn muscle mass. You tell your body that you need to be stronger than you are, and your body then adapts. The best thing about your body is it is an adaptation machine. It will adapt to the stresses that you put on it if given the right amount of recovery. Muscle is the tissue of longevity. And if you're able to build muscle and maintain muscle and keep that muscle throughout the later part of your years, it is proven that you will live a healthier and more independent life. Now, strength is a huge proxy for how long you'll live a good, healthy life as well. So for those people that are stronger, that are able to, let's say, pull themselves up from the floor, get up off the floor by themselves without using their upper body, those that can survive a fall, all these things are a proxy for how long you're going to live. And these are the things that people worry about when they get into their 60s, 70s, 80s. Strength training is also critical for bone density. So when you do resistance training, your muscles pull on tendons and those tendons are anchored to your bone. And when those muscles and tendons pull on that bone, your body releases cells that go to rebuild that area more resilient so that it can withstand that amount of stress and that amount of challenge the next time that it happens. So when you start to pull on those bones and you start to add a little bit of impact, that is going to create better bone density. Because if you don't use it, you will lose it. So that's why as we get older, we start to sit more, we start to move less. Those bones aren't asked to be able to hold up the structure that is the body as much as it used to when we used to roll around as kids and jump around and hang. So strength training can be one of the best ways for us to be able to work on that bone density in order for us to age properly. Another one of the benefits of strength training is something that we talk with our clients all the time about who are coming in for their weight loss goals. Well, strength training can have a positive impact on your metabolism. We talk about this all the time. As you build lean muscle mass, your body's BMR, your basal metabolic rate, essentially what your body burns at rest when it comes to energy. This means that even at rest, your body is going to burn more calories throughout the day, the more muscle mass that you have. So combining strength training with a healthy diet this can assist in weight management and body composition goals. And when you feel good about the way that you look, you show up better in life. Another benefit is what some people might call functional fitness. Strength training improves your ability to perform everyday tasks just more efficiently. So by targeting specific muscle groups, you're going to enhance your functional everyday fitness. It's going to make it easier to lift things, to carry, to push, to pull objects in your everyday life. Whether it's carrying groceries or playing with your children or participating in sports, strength training is going to help you maintain optimal physical function. And you also get enhanced joint stability and injury prevention. Man, strength training is amazing for your mobility. Strength training is not only strengthening muscles, but it also helps to improve your joint stability. So if you're someone that says, I have bad knees, I have a bad neck, I have a bad back, these are all things that can be improved through mobility, which is just strength training through flexible ranges of motion. When the muscles surrounding a joint are stronger, they then provide better support and protection. 
And this can help reduce the risk of injuries, aches and pains, and particularly in the weight-bearing joints like the knees and the hips. Strength training also improves your balance and coordination, which is another thing that we need to worry about as we get older. This is going to further reduce the likelihood of falls and other related injuries as we get into our later years. And then let's not forget about Kelly McGonigal and her hope molecules. You're going to have a boosted mental well-being. Engaging in regular strength training, it has positive effects on your mental well-being. Exercise, but in particular strength training, it's going to stimulate the release of endorphins, the feel-good hormones, the hope molecules that get released throughout your entire body. And this can elevate your mood and reduce stress levels. And let's not forget about strength training just offering an overall enhanced health. It's going to offer a range of health benefits beyond just muscle and bone improvements. It can help you lower your blood pressure. It can help you improve your blood sugar control. It can help you enhance your insulin sensitivity that we have as we eat a bunch of these high processed, high carbohydrate foods. It can help reduce the risk of chronic conditions like heart disease and type two diabetes. It's also going to help promote better sleep, increase energy levels and support a healthy immune system. It's crazy that we haven't talked about strength training up until now. And I think it's mostly because back in the day, our lives just involved strength training. We just went around and on the farms or whatever we were doing, we were already doing strength training functionally throughout our everyday lives. And the more that we go into this, this technology based society where everything can be done at a touch of a button, we are now going to have to manufacture this strength training into our everyday lives in order for us to figure out how to navigate this new technologically advanced world. So incorporating straight training into your fitness routine is such a wise choice just due to all these benefits that we talked about. And now let's talk about when you strength train, why do most people choose cardio over strength training? It's because cardio, you don't really have to have much training to be able to get it done. Well, you should, but most people don't. You can just put on your shoes and go out running. You can just hop in the pool and swim. You can just get on a bike and you can ride. Now, there are some complications that come with this over training issues when doing the same repetitive movement. But with strength training, yes, it is just a little bit more dangerous at the beginning. You're going to have to make sure that you use proper form. Proper form, the best way to do that is to hire a trainer or a coach to make sure that they give you the foundational movements and how to do them properly. From that foundation, you don't have to stay with someone the entire time. And some really good group fitness programs will do this as well. And you don't have to spend quite the amount of dollars on a one-on-one -on -one personal trainer, but you may you have to make sure that you choose the right one. Once you get the proper form down, that's when you can gradually increase the intensity by either increasing the amount of volume you do, maybe it's a bunch more reps, or increasing the amount of weight that you do. Or you can increase the amount of time under tension, meaning going slower or whatever that case may be. But yes, strength training requires a few more extra steps in order to set the base foundation and then progress the right way. And just like anything that we talk about doing here on the Live in the Dream podcast, when it comes to your habits, your behaviors, your physical activity, just start small, start slow, and then slowly progress over time. You will be blown away at the benefits of strength training. You got anything to add on that, Jamie? Yeah, I'd love to pop in. So I was that cardio little queen prior to I'd say about three years ago is when I finally shifted and realized all the importance and the benefits from strength training. Um, and I'm dead serious, you guys, I was running almost every single day prior, I used to not want to pick up heavy weights because I didn't want to get bulky and look strong. And as soon as I shifted my workouts to more strength base and stopped running, that is when my body started to really change. Um, another big, huge reason why I'm super passionate about strength training now. So my mom, love her, but she is not very healthy at all. She is super sedentary and she was literally out just walking one day, walking, and she fell and she broke her elbow because she doesn't do anything to challenge her body. She doesn't lift any weights, barely any movement. And so it's just like, it's heartbreaking to see someone so close to me where I'm sitting here trying to help, but I can only lead by example. Yeah, really great input there. And 
not to bash on cardio at all. This is cardio has so many benefits and maybe we'll talk about that in another episode, but a lot of people think that they have to do their cardio for all the benefits that strength training could do and they don't even love it. So if you don't love running or riding or doing all this activity, maybe invest a little bit more time in your strength training, take the intensity down and start lifting some heavy weights and see what the body does. Uh, cardiovascular health is so important when it comes to your heart, when it comes to your blood vessels, when it comes to being able to have endurance, all that kind of stuff is so great for everyday life, but it's not going to be the best way to change your body composition, especially in the long run. You might be losing a bunch of weight fast, but that's when that muscle mass comes off. And we've talked about that plenty of times. So yeah, we can talk about strength training all day long. Let's move on to the question number three, nutrition question. All right. So question number three, I heard breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Is this true? And what should I eat for fat loss goals? Okay. This is a really, really common question. Great question. What should I eat for breakfast if I'm looking for fat loss goals? So the biggest thing with fat loss goals is of course, am I eating more calories than I'm expending? I'm going to gain weight. Am I eating less calories than I'm expending? I'm going to lose weight. How do I know this? Well, I have to find some awareness. And I only gather awareness by tracking. So I can start tracking something. I can track calories through my fitness pal. I could track protein through a journal. I could track food by simply taking a photo of it and making sure that the foods that I eat are fairly consistent with what I eat on a daily basis. And then over a week's time, throughout that process of tracking, I can also track my body composition metrics, whatever that is. If it is it my weight, is it my inches, is it my body fat percentage? Is it a photo of the way that I look in my bathing suit? Whatever it looks like now after a week or two, and usually it should take two, three, even four weeks of tracking to really get some consistent averages here. The more time you take tracking, the better your data is going to be. But once you do that, you have two data points. You have what you're consuming, maybe what you're expending when it comes to the amount of exercise you're doing. And if you can make that variable consistent, that's a variable that you won't have to worry about. And then you'll also have the way that your body is reacting and changing to all of this input and output. If it's going the direction that you want it to go, you're losing weight and you are keeping your muscle mass, well then continue doing what you're doing. Whatever breakfast that you're eating, great. Do what works for you. Now, here's where it gets tricky because this is probably why the person is asking this. I don't know the person, but if they're asking this question, they're probably not getting their fitness goals. So they're probably either gaining weight, meaning that they could do a couple of a few things here with their breakfast. They could push their breakfast back a little bit, creating a larger time restricted eating window. So what some people would call intermittent fasting, but really it's just pushing breakfast back a few hours. You could also add more protein into your first meal of the day, which will satiate you more, which is more of a compounding trigger that will help later on in the day not to overconsume. Now, when I tell people to do this, I always get a few people saying, oh, I work out in the morning. Should I eat before I work out? And I ask them, how do you feel when you work out? Do you feel lethargic? Do you feel low energy? Do you feel nauseous? Well, if that person is you, then maybe you do need to eat a little something lighter. Uh, uh, 30 to 45 minutes before your workout, or maybe you need to focus a little bit more on what you're eating the night before to be able to fuel with some complex carbohydrates to be able to get you the energy you need for that morning workout. But honestly, breakfast doesn't need to be anything super special. It doesn't need to be the most important meal of the day. In my opinion, if you have the right amount of good quality whole foods that get you the micronutrients that you need, that keeps you in a calorie deficit while maintaining muscle mass, whatever that diet looks like for you, breakfast can be at whatever time and what whatever food types work best for you. Do you have anything to add to that, Jamie, when it comes to your clients, when they ask you about breakfast and should they eat breakfast? Is it important? What should I eat for breakfast? What do you kind of usually tell them when they ask that? Yeah, super tough question. Like you said, it's so, so individualized. Every person's going to be completely different. Um, and I've been trying to dive more into the hormone side for women and how it affects us and eating and all that good stuff. Um, really good follow. She'll be able to guide you and provide you a lot more info. Um, Health with Holland is her handle on Instagram, but I've been learning a lot from her and Honestly, I do. Some of my clients right now are having some hormonal imbalances, and we know that just from 
the biofeedback and symptoms that they came to me with originally. Um, so with those clients specifically, I'm actually asking them to eat some healthy fats, get a little protein in their body and fiber within the first hour of them waking up to give their hormones a nice little kickstart to the day and just get them headed in the right direction. Wow. Yeah. So super nuanced. So is breakfast the most important meal of the day? I would say the answer is no, it's not the most important meal of the day. All the food that you eat is important and timing is going to be one of the last things that is. If you're going to go for hormone stuff, maybe it is a little more important. But for the general person that's just looking for health and fitness goals, the timing of the day, probably not quite as important until you get all the other big rocks dialed down. And then what should you eat for fat loss goals? Well, stick with the whole foods, avoid the ultra processed foods, avoid high carbohydrates early in the morning. So things like orange juice, cereals, breads, pastas, uh, pancakes, muffins, that kind of stuff, essentially dessert for breakfast. And that's going to help you with your hunger roller coaster that you will go on if you start to eat those high carbohydrate foods. So avoid those early if you can front load your protein early and front load your water early. Avoid the liquid calories, taking away those juices or those smoothies. That'll help you a lot when it comes to your fat loss goals. And then if I'm going to recommend a book to read that can really put you on the right track to knowing exactly what foods are best for fat loss and what foods actually do help with your fat loss goals and burning fat and helping with your metabolism is a book by Dr. William Lee called Eat to Beat Your Diet. Dr. William Lee, he wrote a bunch of books, but his Eat to Beat Your Diet was specifically focused on this question, not specifically breakfast, but foods that are gonna be helpful towards your fat loss goals. So definitely recommend checking out the Eat to Beat Your Diet book by Dr. William Lee. If anyone listening to this right now has any great suggestions on things that have helped them in the past or any knowledge that they may have on this topic, let us know. We'd love to share with the Live in the Dream team. Beautiful. Moving on to this week's recommendation. And we wanted to recommend someone that we look up to a lot, that we look to for a lot of information, who's just been killing it when it comes to sharing free content that usually takes a college degree to get. And that's Professor Andrew Huberman. He does the Huberman Lab podcast. He also does a ton of YouTube videos that are very great. And then also he, he has all categories of science. So health, fitness, wellness, but also anything else that you can think of when it comes to the science field. We really love the way he presents the information. He talks about the underlying mechanisms, and then he talks about tangible, actionable items that you can do into your life that are easy and non-cost He's just a great, great source of information, and his whole team has been doing a really wonderful job over this past couple years. Really big shout out to Andrew Huberman. Follow him on the Huberman Lab podcast or on Instagram at Huberman Lab. Great dude, great intentions. I support him by buying into his premium channel just because of how amazing he is. So really wanted to shout him out. Hopefully you guys check him out. You probably have already heard of him. And then this week's quote, this week's quote, was short and sweet, but so, so powerful. This week's quote says, your health is an investment, not an expense. Your health is an investment. It's not an expense. Long term, you're going to save money. Investing in your health can potentially save you significant medical expenses in the future. For example, adopting a healthy lifestyle and managing weight can help prevent those chronic conditions that we see so prevalent right now, like diabetes and heart disease, and reducing the need for costly treatments and medications as we go into those later years of our life. You're going to have increased energy and productivity when you prioritize your health. This can lead to better performance at work, increased focus, and just overall efficiency in your daily activities. You're going to have improved mental well-being when you focus on your health. Regular exercise releases endorphins, which can boost mood, reduce anxiety and stress, and even symptoms of depression. By investing in your health, you invest in your mental well-being and your emotional resilience. You will see enhanced quality of life, especially in the later years. Whether it's participating in your favorite activities, spending time with loved ones, or pursuing hobbies, good health enables you to engage fully and experience greater satisfaction in life. Your immune system will be stronger. You will live longer and healthier. You will have improved self-confidence 
and you'll provide a positive role model for the people that are in your life. You're going to have better cognitive function and you're just going to have improved overall happiness. When you invest in your health, you're investing in your own happiness and well-being. And healthy people are happier people who give back to the community. Sick people only want one thing, and that is to just feel better. So invest in your health. There's nothing else that's more important. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. That's the only thing that you want. So we have to stop thinking about the personal trainer or the coach or the group fitness experience or the gym as this additional optional cost that we can cut out when we need to. This should be something that you invest in, just like your education, just like your family's well-being. This right here is going to be one of the most important investments that you make in your life. Invest in your health. It is one of the best compounding investments that you can make. It is not an expense. And that's it for today for this week's episode. I want to thank everyone for making it all the way to the end. And if you enjoyed this content and would like to support us in making more episodes like this one, it helps us a ton if you could share this episode with someone that you think could benefit from it. You could also take a screenshot and post it on one of your social media stories with one takeaway. And that'll help us understand how to make better episodes for you in the future. Another non-cost way to support us is to leave a five-star review on whatever platform you're listening to this on, if you feel like we've earned it. And if you have time to write something short, that would really help the algorithm God show this podcast to others who may be looking for good health, fitness, and wellness information. We can't thank you all enough, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for listening and learning here with us on the Living the Dream podcast. We are so grateful for you being a part of this lifelong learning journey. If you have any topics you'd like to discuss, please let us know in the comments or by messaging me on Instagram at CoachDamian underscore SD. Be kind to someone today. Smile at someone today. And leave every person you come into contact with better than before. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.